Welcome to Worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm the Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my pleasure to serve in the ministry along with the members and friends, children and youth of this congregation. In this liberal religious tradition, we understand that each of us is fabulous and flawed, and that we, when we wrestle with major questions of purpose and meaning, we do better together in a freely gathered religious community. Our mission is to embrace freedom, love wholeheartedly, grow in the spirit, and help heal our world. It is good to be together for these purposes in all the ways that we can gather at this time. And as we come together for worship, we are mindful of the many people who have traveled before us. We recognize and honor the Peoria people who created their lives on these lands long before we were here. This congregation is sustained by the care, talents, and generous gifts of members and friends. If you would like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or at the slide at the end of the service. And if you are new to this congregation, you are very welcome. I invite you to help us get to know you. At the end of the service will be the link to our Zoom coffee hour, and all are welcome to that conversation. If you'd like to get to know the church a little more, please send a note to us through the website. Now, you might notice our change in scenery. I want to recognize Sherry and David Wisner and Nancy Taylor for our new winter scene on the altar decorations this month. And I also want to thank Lindy and Zach Peterson for putting away our Christmas tree. Thank you also to Martha DeBold, Jill Thomas, and Emily Smezrud and family for contributing elements of the service today. Our hymns and music come from several sources. Thank you to Community Church of New York, Unitarian Universalist, for their version of Wake Now, My Senses. Thank you to Jerry Howe, who wrote and performed Morning Reflection. Thank you also to Jess Hutman for her interpretation of There Is More Love Somewhere. And finally, thank you to Leah Morris, who is accompanied by Cantor Jason Kaufman for Soon the Day Will Arrive. And now, let us enter into worship together. Wake now, my senses, and hear the earth call. Feel the deep power of being in awe. Keep with a web of creation your vow. Giving, receiving, as love shows us how. Wake now, my reason, reach out to the new. Join with each pilgrim whose quest for Oh my God. 
Be Generous With Your Dreaming by Reverend Gretchen Haley. Cast your vision here in the middle of the hardest moment, the turning of the new year. This life with so much worth saving, this fragile faith for the children born now into the world as it is with the threat of war and whole continents burning still. While the memory lingers of holidays chaotic and miraculous into this day. Offer the vision you've tried to talk yourself down from your wildest dream, your audacious aims, the beauty that whispers to you to follow and build and become. For this world coming undone by distraction and greed and fear, this world divided by made up borders, fake, fights, and all that needs forgiveness. Here, stir up your steadfast hope, your absolute clarity of what remains possible. Be generous with your dreaming and brave. All paths to the future are born in this courage of imagination, this whittlingness to shed, to salvage, to start again, to be this blessing for each other, to be this blessed. Come, let us worship together. On the Brink of a New Year by Lois Van Leer. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been, open and hopeful for what may come, renewed, restored, ready. To live life fully anew, may we move forward with intention. Good morning. We have just entered the year 2021. And I know two things to be true, that we have all faced many challenges and learned some hard lessons this past year, and that we all have sincere hopes for the upcoming year. Today, I would like to tell you a story about the magic of both the past and the future, and how we can imagine a better world. It's called The Fairy's New Year Gift, adapted from Emily Polson. Two little boys were at play one New Year's Eve when a fairy suddenly appeared before them and said, I have been sent to give you New Year presents. She handed to each child a package and in an instant she was gone. Carl and Philip opened the packages and found in them two beautiful books with pages as pure and white as the snow when it first falls. Twelve months passed, and the fairy came again to the boys. I have brought you each another book, said she, and will take the first ones back to Father Time. Can't I keep mine a little longer, asked Philip. I haven't thought much about it. I'd like to paint something on the last page that lies open. And could I look through mine just once, said Carl. I only see one page at a time because each time a page turns over, it sticks fast and I can never open the book at more than one place each day. Yes, said the fairy. You may look at your books one last time. And she lit for them two little silver lamps and by the light of which they saw the pages as she turned them. The boys looked in wonder, 
Could it be that these were the same fair blank books that she had given them a year ago? Where were the clean white pages as pure as the snow when it first falls? Here was a page with black spots and scratches upon it. And next, a page that showed a lovely little picture. Some pages were decorated with gold and silver and gorgeous colors, others with beautiful flowers, and still others with a rainbow of the softest, most delicate brightness. Yet even on the most beautiful of the pages, there are always a few dark blots and scratches. Carl and Philip looked up at the fairy at last. Who did this, they ask. Every page was white and empty when we opened to it, yet now there's not a single blank place in the whole book. Shall I explain some of the pictures to you? Said the fairy, smiling at the two little boys. See, Philip, the spray of roses blossomed on this page when you let your friend play with your things. And this pretty bird that looks as if it were singing with all its might wouldn't be on this page if you had not been kind and caring just the other day. But what made this blot? asked Philip. That, said the fairy, that came when you were sad and scared dark in the night. And another came when you told an untruth. And this one when you were so angry at your brother that you broke one of his toys. All these blots and scratches that look so ugly in both your book and in Carl's were made when you were in pain or caused pain. And each beautiful picture in your books, and there are a lot, came on its page when you were joyful, happy, and loving. Now they are a part of the past and must go back into Father Time's bookcase, for you have learned your lessons from them but I have brought you each a new blank book full of possibilities. Perhaps you can make these even more beautiful than the others. Just use what you've learned this year, open your hearts, and imagine the future you wish. So saying, she vanished, and the boys were left alone, but each held in his hand a new book opened to the first page. And on the back of these books were written in letters of gold for the new year. I wish each of you the well-earned wisdom from this past year and a hopeful new year full of imagination and possibilities. So be it. We are grateful to mark the time with seasons, to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, or gather as family to remember our loved ones. In all these seasons, may we give thanks for the breath of life, ever mindful of the fragile nature of existence. May we live fully in each moment. And as we move through the end of the old year and into the coming of the new, we gather in mystery and in the bonds of beloved community. May we radiate love both from within the circle of care and beyond our congregation. For our joys and sorrows, we begin with hopes for health. We send healing wishes to Kathy and John Lothrop, who are both recovering at home from illness. We offer our support and comfort to Maureen O'Haney and healing wishes to Maureen's niece, Amber, and family who are recovering from COVID. And now, let us move on to joy. We send our congratulations to Nancy Sherman and Pat Hayes as they celebrated their 27th wedding anniversary on December 18th. And we also offer our best wishes to Ev Maloney as she settles into her new home. Let us take one more moment for all the joys and the sorrows, the names and the milestones that live in our hearts. You're welcome to follow the breath with me as we take this moment together. And breathe in. And 
and breathe out. I also want to add a note for our larger world. We have one more deep sorrow to mark. In keeping with our effort to recognize Indigenous people, this past week also included the anniversary of the massacre at Wounded Knee in South Dakota in 1890. U.S. soldiers had gathered to celebrate the surrender of Lakota tribes before the full onset of winter. There were high feelings and a large amount of guns, and that resulted in soldiers killing 250 adults and children of the Lakota tribes. As historian Heather Cox Richardson says, one of the curses of history is that we cannot go back to change the course leading to disasters, no matter how much we might wish to. The past has its own terrible inevitability. But it is never too late to change the future. In this time, in this moment, as we recognize the sorrows of the past, may we take the time to learn and choose another path. As we also grapple with the end of the year and the impact of COVID on our lives, I offer a special musical reflection. Jerry Howe uh, created a piece called Morning Reflection, and she wrote and performed the, performed the music and also wrote the message that she includes in the video. Her message, uh, the text of it, is in the order of service. And now, Morning Reflection.
Rest in the Peace of the Moment by Rev. Chris Cervantes. Rest now. Rest in the peace of this moment. Be at ease. Look up at the stars and down at the grass. Imagine the stars looking back at you over years and centuries across oceans of empty space. Imagine the feel of the grass on your bare feet and feel it dry and crunchy, soft and supple. Rest now. Rest in the peace of this moment. Dream for a while of young people and young animals, innocent in the way of the young, careless and uncaring, accepting everything in their newness. Dream for a while of the elders and the wisdom they have to give, and the voices that say to you, it is right and proper to rest now. Rest in the peace of this moment. Be still as the turning axis of the world and let go of the long unspooling history of sorrow and joy and birth and death and all the long years in between. Rest now. Rest in the peace of this moment. There is more love somewhere. There is more love somewhere. I'm going to keep on till I find it. There is more love somewhere. I begin with simply a blank page. It is to me, well, a, a thing of beauty, something open, smooth, ready, and waiting. Kind of open the notebook, lay it out, smooth it out, and begin. I like the lines for writing, and unlined also works as well, but something that is simply available, that provides a launching point for who knows what might be created, what might be encountered, what might emerge. That smooth blank paper is a thing of beauty and possibility. It lets me start anywhere with any word or image to kind of initiate that movement of brain and body and then proceed to discover what there is to discover. I recognize 
that on any given moment, on any given paper, that only so much will end up being saved and shared, presented to the world. But just starting someplace, just starting anything to get it out of my head and onto a form to look at and experience that by itself is helpful, is part of the process. It is the beginning. Very little of whatever I put on the page, whether computer or on paper, very little of that will last and endure the test of time or the distractions of life. But it is the wondering, the starting, the taking in this form. It's like waking up to the quiet of new snow and then making the first footprints, if you will. In my best moments, that is what a blank page, a blank piece of paper can mean to me. But I also recognize there's a lot of relationships of various kinds with a blank page. For anyone who has present, been presented with such something, a, a fresh notebook, an empty screen, uh, these things can also be objects of intimidation, expectation, a little overwhelming, a little daunting. Deadlines when one has to produce something in particular can be both inspirational for getting something done and also a lot of distress and anxiety and block. This is also true. For this moment, as we are on the threshold of a new year, between the old of 2020 and the next of 2021, I offer one last encounter with the cycle of holidays and holy days this liminal time that began with Halloween and All Souls and renews the year with the new year. This is kind of the end of that window, of that space and time where kind of things were forming, questioning, disrupted, but also gathering in potential and emerging. We've come to the finish of that page, and now we come into a new one, if you will, turning the year of the calendar. And I want to offer that I think the new year, as it were, can feel so much like a great reason to have a party. It is a moment of celebration. It is we've gone through this one time and into the next. And sometimes it's just about having fun. But what we're doing here and now, this is theology. As we say, uh, to borrow from Stan Lee, uh, but also combine it with Unitarian Universalism, with great freedom comes great responsibility. As a faith, as we encounter a new window of time, we can let our hearts soar and cherish the world of which we are a part. We are bound and wound together. We are co-creators in each moment within the larger overlapping circles and cycles around us and within us. Engaging in this moment with all that we are this is an active theological experience of meaning-making, of questioning, of wondering. Now is a time of preparation for the next year, but also this next instant in every moment. How shall we be more prepared for what is to come in a way that is consistent with what we hold true? My colleagues who cook and have young children um, have been talking about 
getting ready, uh, using the French term mise en place. Uh, that is the term for having everything cut up and portioned out and ready to be used in the process of cooking. Each pan is floured or lined. Every utensil uh, is available. You have one's apron on, hands washed, the timers are in reach, and go. Now the same process can be true for art, writing, music, woodworking, any creative process, any project, mise en place, can be physical, emotional, intellectual, to be ready, set, to go. From the story uh, that we heard earlier, the fairy presented each child with a new book for the year in that spirit of readiness. What if we each had a fresh set of pages before us. I know I would have pens and some colored, some black, uh, maybe watercolor or markers or more. As we are making meaning in this moment, what would you have with you? What do you already have inside you and before you and around you. In looking at the new year, I'm not asking for resolutions. You know, I certainly don't have those myself, you know, those goals, those promises. Right now is about liminal time, about reflection and intention, beginning to make sense of what has been, anticipating and being thoughtful about what is to come. This preparedness is part of our part of being in the interdependent web of existence. But I'll tell you that the first actual task of this preparedness in the new year is not setting up the pens or smoothing the paper, if you will. The fairy let the boys look back at their year. They saw the colors and the splotches and the mistakes and the carelessness along with the glory and the joy and accomplishment. Our first task of preparedness is reviewing and celebrating and mourning and different elements of the service that we've already shared have been those purposes, have been those parts of the preparedness. And I want to invite you, is there anything else for now, anything else that needs to be named, claimed, grudgingly acknowledged, or held in sorrow? If there had been more or any national recognition of the dead and losses, each of us would still have burdens in our hearts. Even if there had been something on a national level to recognize all that has been harmed or, or suffered in this last year, we would still have so much in us. The reflection of what has been will continue of course, and probably will for, in some ways, for the rest of our lives. But let me close honoring that, looking at that back, that review and that struggle. And I'll close it with words from Jan Richardson. Blessed are you who bear the light in unbearable times who testify to its endurance amid the unendurable, who bear witness to its persistence when everything th seems in shadow and grief. Blessed are you in whom the light lives, in whom the brightness blazes, your heart a chapel, 
an altar where in the deepest night can be seen the fire that shines forth in you. And in unaccountable faith, in stubborn hope, in love that illumines every broken thing it finds. Blessed are you. Having blessed that past, we can begin to turn to what comes next. My religious education colleague, Tim Atkins, acknowledges how his religious humanist heart has not always connected with the depths of the winter holidays. But the new year for him, that has become something special. That has been, become a time to set intentions and reconnect with what matters most. Every year he names one particular word. Last year was authenticity, for example. This coming year, in his case, it is roots. As the musician and artist Beyonce says, in our perfect ways, in the ways we are human, in the ways we are beautiful, we are here. Happy New Year's. Let's make it ours. So here is what is before us, what already frames the page, if you will. I'm going to spend a moment on that and recognize that even as we begin, that some of our pages are kind of a hot mess already. I mean, pandemic, politics, the economy, our struggles with racism and other systems of oppression. And then there's also our personal struggles, whether it's family or emotional health or money, education, isolation, our physical health, for all the reasons that can happen. There are so many layers that are already present in what we have before us. What's also present is what has been learned, what we have gained, what people have celebrated, what is truly important that has been discovered and reaffirmed and connected in this past year, of the value of relationship and kindness and love and authenticity and art. Life created in abundance in the midst of restrictions. Commitments to creating a different world based on what has been learned. Those all are part of our pages that can be the pages to come. Perhaps, perhaps to make the exercise more concrete, whether you have a shopping list or a receipt or a paper towel or even a piece of paper with you, I wonder what your word might be for this year or two words, or even three words. What might you want to put at the top of the page, regardless of anything else that is around? For the congregation, for this beloved community, I want to keep coming back to the words that I started the year with of covenant, and quality and connection. Covenant that motivation and inspiration to keep living into the possibilities, to keep living into mission, to keep living into commitments to one another, where intentionality can take place as a congregation and has done so for nearly 180 years. Covenant 
It is our commitment to the congregation and to fulfilling the mission of love and of helping to heal the world. Quality. Quality in understanding that we are worth the effort, that beloved community is worth doing well. And by quality, I mean, what is the best that we can offer in any moment? The very best, knowing that that best is always a little bit different from time to time. But the commitment to bringing our best selves to each other and to our larger purpose, that is the essence of quality. Connection, that we are better together than apart. This congregation and this faith is worth finding creative solutions uh, and overcoming obstacles and making a place of welcome for everyone. How can we find the ways to keep in touch to remind each other that we are still here, that you are not alone. Covenant, quality, and connection. As for how we might do that, for the tools, say, so if we were uh, talking about a, uh, a piece of paper, for example, we might imagine uh, each segment of these words with a pen or a paintbrush, a color, a bowl of clay. I mean, seriously, go three-dimensional with this because we ourselves are and can be people of wholeness, full of texture and color and torn places and mended places because we already are. How can we equip ourselves to be present to this time, to fulfill those words, to be fully honoring the pages before us. It's our first year uh, since going virtual is coming up in March. Perhaps we can check back then and perhaps do so around my installation with you. As a society and as a congregation, we will need to be more aware, more honest, and more intentional as we begin to sort out how to be near each other again. That will be, in some ways, even more complicated than it was to all go home. The more that we can be getting ready now, the better we will be prepared to come back together again and to navigate all of those decisions that are before us. The next book of life is in front of us in this coming year. May we smooth the pages, set out our tools, and begin. I close with a prayer from my colleague, Reverend Sarah Lawal. And she says, Because I hate resolutions, I make promises of imagination, making manifest the little dreams buried this year, and bigger hopes crushed by a thousand little cuts, by the sweeping tidal waves of 2020, and also promises to hold on to the lessons, lingering in the muck and beauty of it all. I promise I promise to get outside every day, to drink in the cool air and look up at the sky, to hug trees and smell flowers, and to bring more green inside. I promise to water those plants too. I promise to stay slow, to sit and stare, to take more naps, to say no, and yes, more often. 
I promise to love freely, to keep cooking and making bread. I promise to say thank you for the little things and the big things every day. I promise not to get too comfortable or too righteous to let in enough pain to stay fired up and committed to the dream of belovedness, the dream of the emerging world, where our liberation is bound up with everyone and everything, always beckoning us to see more clearly and love more deeply. I promise to let the fires burn away the old crusty obstacles and excuses and make space for new dreams, for all that imagination can conjure, to notice the light and let it shine, to fan the flames of hope and cleanse the spirit and let life begin again, renewed and gentle, following the sparks into the next unknown. Amen. Our closing hymn is Soon the Day Will Arrive. O tire, o tire, kamatoriye, bashana, bashana, haba. O tire, o tire, kamatoriye, bashana, bashana, haba. Soon the day will arrive when we will be together. And the children will smile without wondering whether on that day thunder clouds will appear. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care, you and me. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be. If we share, if we care, you and me. Some have dreamed, some have died to make a bright tomorrow, and their vision remains in our hearts. Now the torch must be passed with new hope, not in sorrow, and the promise. extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And from my colleague, the Reverend Michael Schuler. 
We've reached the end of this time for the gathering of memory, for the letting imagination play with future possibilities. We have enjoyed magic moments and edified each other. Shall we be concluded? Or will this adventure now commenced continue? Our separate paths converging, meeting, merging in an unending forest and a quest of love, more manifest, in joyous struggle for meaning more sufficient and life more abundant, is this an ending to be an ending or merely a prelude to new and more glorious beginnings? I pose the question, what shall be? And in our hearts lies the answer. Our worship is ended. Let our possibilities begin. <laughs>